Good morning. Good morning. Our ancient antiphon, O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather today, we call to mind God's presence with us, and as always, we seek to know and to love and to celebrate his love and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the, this Holy Spirit to guide us to the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the long-awaited Messiah, the anointed one of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you are the Son of God, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer Naboth the Jezreelite had made to him. I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, why are you so angry that you will not eat? He answered her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange. But he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, A fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up. Eat and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite for you. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and having sealed them with his seal, sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth. This is what she wrote in the letters. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. Then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwelt in his city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing through the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confronted him with the accusation, Naboth has cursed God and king. And they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, 
to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Lord, listen to my groaning. Lord, listen to my groaning. Hearken to my words, O Lord. Attend to my sighing. Heed my call for help, my King and my God. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lord, listen to my groaning. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lord, listen to my groaning. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel reading uh, today is, continues that Sermon on the Mount, and uh, we hear this radical, radical message uh, that Jesus offers. So uh, at the time, the eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth was meant to, to limit the punishment that somebody would receive for a crime. So even in, in that world then, um, it, was, it would have been seen as, as, uh, as quite a step. Uh, to, to, because people were, the, the justice system was pretty out of control, right? So Jesus wanted the, to, to limit the punishment, but then he takes it an even further step. And rather than even doing the punishment, he talks about this, this uh, radical idea that you wouldn't even uh, give retribution for, for different things. Um, and to our mind and to our way of thinking, it's foreign, even to today. Right? Somebody does something bad to me, my first inclination as a human being, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them back. Right? They deserve it. And we, we, we catch ourselves in that kind of thinking. So what Jesus is moving us uh, into again and again and again is to think like he does, to act like he does, to respond to people like he does. Um, and, and it is, it goes against what our normal way of thinking is, and that's the beautiful part about it, is that we are asked and invited into the divine way of responding um, and, and of giving ourselves and putting ourselves out there uh, even, even more completely. Uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola would, would uh, guide us and, and instruct us and advise us to, to never look and, and to try and always see and understand where that other person is coming from, right? And I think in our lives, we, we may experience this in terms of somebody says something uh, evil or bad uh, to us or about us, or uh, they offend us in some way, or they, they hurt us in one way or another, right? And so St. Ignatius would say, rather than, than react to that, with the same kind of action. Try to understand where that person's coming from. And then that understanding will, will breed patience, right? And we are going to respond to them 
uh, in a good way rather than perpetuate the negative by doing the same thing back. It's a, it, this is difficult stuff, but it's great to bring to prayer. And it's a, it's a wonderful way for us to, in another way, imitate how Jesus would respond and, and to, to put into practice how Jesus wants us to respond. So as we continue uh, this prayer this morning, and uh, hopefully we can bring this reflection with us as we go about our day, let's ask the Lord to help us to, to perpetuate the good, help us to introduce the good, maybe where it's absent um, in, in some kind of an encounter or uh, some kind of an ongoing situation that we have but to allow the Lord to work through us and to say yes to that, even when it's difficult, even when it it requires of us something we think we don't have. That's the good thing about what Jesus promises us. He gives us what we need. So as we gather around the table to receive his body and blood, he becomes one with us again and, and fills us with his grace and his forgiveness. Let's be grateful for that and ask the Lord then to help us to live according to it. And together, let us offer our petitions to our loving God. For our church, may the Lord increase her in faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For individuals in positions of authority, may the Holy Spirit guide them in how they use their power and inspire them in protecting the lives of those most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with addiction, may Christ the physician be with them in their struggles and bring them hope and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the grace of, grace of word and sacrament deepen our faith and our trust in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for the many years of faithful ministry of Archbishop Carlson and ask the Lord to bless and strengthen Archbishop-elect Rozanski as he prepares to become the 10th Archbishop of St. Louis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially for Leo and Catherine Holzem, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they come to share in the baptismal promise of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's take a moment to offer our own personal intentions to God. And for these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise. We ask you now to hear us. Listen to the prayers we've spoken and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And your compassion and mercy answer us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. And let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and with all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Lamb of God.
God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive the communion this morning, my dear, my dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a quick word of uh, congratulations for uh, Deacon Leon. Today is his anniversary, 24? 24 years, so as a deacon, congratulations.
Have a great day, everybody. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.